Hello, my name is Ed Frawley. Today I have a really good question and answer. We get these questions from the Ask Cindy portal on the front of Lierberg.com, and we literally get lots and lots and lots of questions in there. We put them on our website. When we do that, for someone to ask a question, they have to give their email address, and I'll tell you why. It's not because we're not gonna spam you, we don't sell our mailing list to anybody, not anybody, never will. Why we need people's email is that all the questions in that portal go into a ticket system that are tied to that email address. And Cindy answers them every day. A lot of times she's up taking care of our horses at five o'clock and she'll come in and have her first cup of coffee and answer the Q&As for the night or the day before. When customers ask questions and they don't give enough details of the problems they have, Cindy will go back and say, look, I need, I need more information. Is your dog doing this? What's going on here, here, and here? And then that customer can come back and in a day, in a week, in a year, and Cindy can look them up by their email address and see the whole thread of everything they've done to try and help them through that problem. And this is gonna be a good example of that because there's multi layers to it. And Cindy had to ask this customer several questions and that customer came back and you're gonna get a feel for how this works and how it can benefit you. So here's the way it's gonna come out. This is about a 10 month old border collie that's more interested in other dogs than engagement with the handler. And I'll start by reading the first ticket. Hi, our border collie is 10 month old male. We're doing very well with him, reliable recalls, etc. until the last month or two. Now, off leash while playing with other dogs, he will not return. He is super interested in other dogs. He likes to play, but if the other dogs are not interested, he will do something hurting behaviors or whatever. Also now while walking, he loses it if he gets near a playground and sees a rabbit or another dog or something else that he finds more interesting. He really needs to get off leash to get his running and his exercise in. So we're kind of stuck. We had him at our engagement session at our local training center last week, and he lost it when the other dog started running around. We were doing agility training with him, and we could only keep his attention with continuous rewards. Most of the time, this worked until he sees motion of the other dog and he lunges away. So now, we only let him off leash to exercise in the fenced off leash area. We need help with a plan on how we can fix this. Very good questions, probably very common questions. To begin with, this age, 10 months, is so common. We get so many questions on people that have 10 month to 14 month old dogs because they're going through puberty and they're a little scattered. It's like, it's like kids when kids go through puberty. It's the same for the dogs. Over the years, I bought a lot of dogs that were very, very nice dogs when I used to buy young selection tested dogs for police service work. I got a lot of dogs at this age that were great dogs, but they were a little goofy and I could recognize them and they turned out to be really good working dogs. And that can be the case with this dog. So we're gonna talk about it. So at this stage in his development, we feel you're way ahead of yourself. We think you should back up your training and a number of steps back. We would not allow this dog to play with other dogs at all. We would also not be doing agility work with a 10 month old dog that has this behavior. That's just setting your dog up to practice bad behavior. And the more you do that, the stronger that behavior is gonna be. So bring him back into more of a sterile environment. And when you back it up, go all the way back and continue to work on engagement in the sterile environment. Your dog needs to learn how to play with you. He needs to learn how to, how to work for you. He needs to interact with you and he needs to play games with you. You have to do that and get him really at a high level of engagement before you start introducing him to these other distractions. Plus, 
That's how your dog is going to get both physical and mental exercise. A lot of times, training new behaviors or focusing your dog on, on training is mental exercise. It can be just as good as physical exercise for a dog. People, people don't understand that. After you do your engagement sessions, put him in a crate. Let him lay there. Let him think about what just happened. Don't take him for a walk after you do it. Put him away. Let him go lay down. Let him rest for 20 minutes. Relying on him to run off leash with other dogs and ignore you when he's doing it, it may work for some dogs, but not for dogs like you have right here. You're just, and I say it again and again and again, you're allowing your dog to practice bad behavior and it's gonna get worse and worse and worse if you don't change the way you're handling your dog. And then Cindy went on and asked, what an engagement session that you have with your local trainer consists of. And then later, the customer came back and said, thanks for the reply, making a decision not to continue this set of agility classes is kind of a relief, as it's a difficult session struggling mentally and physically to try and keep him engaged with me. As I suppose, we're going to have him for many, many years to come, and we need to set the next decade of behavior correctly. We tried the engagement session to see what we can do. They normally run a series of classes, but in this case, they had a one-time engagement for dog sports. It was in a room with several other dogs of various ages and breeds. Now this is at her training facility that she goes to. He was just barely manageable until they started the engagement with the other dogs using several squeaky balls to get the other dog focused on the balls. Our dog, Raz, went nuts wanting to join in. That was the end of the class for us. We went with another trainer in a smaller area and did some engagement with him, which was fine with no distractions. They then led their calm beagle to walk slowly near him. That was the most distraction that he could handle. So, we're working on the behavior reboot now, as you advised. We're only concerned that as he likes to run and run, that needs to be off leash. But it's nearly impossible to get him run time off leash without other dogs being around. How much physical exercise does a dog, a boar collie, really need? And do you have experience in the general timeline for this re-behaviouring? We've got your engagement video and your recall video. I guess that's where we have to start and go back to the beginning. So, that's the second ticket that came in on the same issue. And Cindy's now going to go back. She's reviewed what she said before, and she'll add to it. And we'll talk about what she says here. She said, first of all, you mentioned that the classes use squeaky toys to get the dogs focused on their squeaky toys. Keep in mind what engagement is. A dog that is engaged is a dog that wants to be with you 110%, and it wants what you have. And you, what you have can be a squeaky toy. We want our dogs in engagement to focus on us, not on this toy, which sounds like what's going on in this other class. They're not understanding what real engagement is. And again, I'm gonna repeat it because it's important. Good engagement is a dog that wants to be with you and it wants what you have. And what you have is either its favorite toy, a food reward, a tug reward, but it doesn't need to see, in the end of this, it doesn't need to see the food, the toy, or whatever. The dog just has to be with you and we don't want it to be focused on a squeaky toy. Mistake number one, two or three or four. And then Cindy goes on to explain that there, there is no timeline because there are too many variables. Every dog would have to have a different timeline. We don't know the dog that well, but there is no timeline that we can get. We often get questions, well, can you give me a timeline on basic obedience and blah, blah, blah. No, we can't, because it depends on the dog. It depends on the trainer. It depends on the tools. It depends on the distractions. There's so many things that go into dog training. That's why we always say dog training is an art, 
And then Cindy went on to say, what you don't want to do is test this behavior too soon. In other words, if you really have to work in a low distraction environment for your dog to keep him engaged with you, to keep him mentally with you, then don't be adding more distractions to that environment until you 100% have him with you. And Cindy then asks, will this dog play with you? Will this dog play fetch with you? Will this dog play with a toy with you? That's a great way to get him some exercise that comes through you and not through running loose outside. His exercise should come with the work that you do with this dog. You can exercise a dog in a very small environment and by playing tug, by playing fetch, with engagement skills, you can give them all the exercise that you need in a small, sterile environment. You can also take him out into a place where you can jog with the dog. You can let him run with you by your bike if you have a little bit of control there. Kind of an art to doing that, but it can be done. But pick areas that are also sterile. Pick areas like in our town here, uh, our business is in an industrial park that has very good walking paths, a couple miles of them. And they're not used very often, a perfect place to exercise a dog like this, but keep him on leash. We would not allow a dog like this to be off leash at all. There is no need for a dog like this to be off leash. In fact, it's dangerous to lose the dog. And for sure, don't put him in a dog park. Dog parks are the worst thing in the world. I'm going to get a lot of people pissed because I said that, but the fact is, they are. I wrote a very good article on my website on why dog parks are the worst idea that people have ever devised. And that article has been reprinted in dog club magazines all over Europe and the United States. Cindy then explains, we would select activities that put you in the forefront with this dog. This helps build your engagement with the dog and it builds your exercise routine with the dog and your relationship with the dog. We have a treadmill. Uh, we use the treadmill, and they're not that expensive. We use the treadmill to exercise dogs that are like this. When we have young dogs that are too focused on everything around, we train them to run on the treadmill, and we sit there with them and monitor them. We'll sit there and be on our computer, and every dog goes on it for a certain period of time, and then it comes off. There's not a set period of time to make them run. We also will swim with our dogs. Swimming is a great exercise. And again, she says, and I've kind of already covered it, is that learning new things and using their brain is often tiring for dogs and humans. It's a physical exercise. So here's some of the training material we would suggest. The Power of Training Dogs with Food is an excellent online course that we have. The Power of Playing Tug with Your Dog and advanced concepts in motivation. All three of these online courses were done with Michael Ellis, one of the best dog trainers in the world. Skipping over the skills in these resources puts you at a disadvantage. Very, very important thing. It's so common for people to get ahead of themselves. And everybody wants to do the best thing for their dog. It's a common thing to get ahead of yourself. You always have, when you see a problem like this, you need to go back and you need to sit down and you think about what happened? Why did that happen? What did I do wrong? It wasn't what your dog did wrong. It, what did I do wrong? And how far do I have to back up my training to get it back on track? That's the way to think about dog training. And that's why it's more of an art. So in closing, I have to say that without focus, without engagement, you're gonna struggle with this dog forever. So it needs to be the foundation for your training. <laughs> it needs to be the foundation for all dog training, quite frankly, engagement and focus. So good luck. And for those people that are new to our social media and just happen on this video, if you're not familiar with Learbird, we have been on the internet since 1994. We have over 1,500 free streaming videos on our website, and a lot of training articles that I've written. Uh, check us out.